Dodd Jackson. To me, I was buying it because, one, it was the third one, and the first two had already been bought by that place out in New York and sold to some guy. So some guy back east has the Polka Dot V Jackson 1 and 2. And here's another thing. People don't get worked up about that. They get worked up about the Sandoval. Randy did not like the way that damn thing played. He kind of liked the way to play, but the thing is, is it wouldn't stay in tune for shit. It was the text that he had. The bigger they got, the better his texts were on the road. And they were able to do all the tricks, the graphite, and the... He's using... That neck is a, a Dan Electro. The same one that Eddie was experimenting with on his star. He put a Dan Electro on that. That's why that ugly head, that headstock is so ugly. But, you know, on Eddie, he doesn't care. He'll keep anything. So that's why that ugly headstock is on the star, uh, Eddie Van Halen, is because that's a Dan Electro neck. Apparently, they don't care if they use their neck. I guess they're not in business. I don't know. Who cares? But it was a good because it was flat and the strings went straight. So there's no friction. And when you're meow. You're trying to get the strings to slide through the nut easy and back. And that's why everybody was using Dan Electros. Or fenders and then work on them. But, so the neck that is on the Sandoval V is a Dan Electro with the custom headstock. And uh, that's it. It's a freaking Dan Electro. It doesn't have a truss rod. So it's like... So Jackson was getting ready to give him a polka dot V because Randy's saying, you know, I, it's already starting to crack and I've only had it a few years and they're like, you put the wrong paint, you put the wrong finish on it. Just like my cousin just got nailed on that. Remember that, uh, I don't know how many of you saw my uh, Love Gun uh, Les Paul that I got. It's a... Uh, Gene, you know, it's a love gun paint job, and it's got Gene Peter Paul over here, and then a big picture of Ace, and all the girls are by him. It's like, a, I think it was cool. I thought it was cool enough to buy it, so I bought it for five hundred and fifty-six dollars. My my cousin doesn't seem to remember the the whole price, but I sold it to him. He's like, so I pay, it's this much. I'm like, yeah, it's that much. It's cool. I just wanted family to have it, and Chuck's, my cousin Chucky, who I thought I'd be hanging out with all the time, I used to, he moved to Kentucky because, you know, his sister uh, is lazy, the one that lives out here. So, uh, so no, I can't go down and, and interview the roads anybody right now with a camera. Bad idea. But they are putting together some kind of film that's going to be shown at the backstage meet and greet. And if you're around here and you hear the roads are going to be backstage with the meet and greet, you're going to see something on video. I think Jack is doing it. Osborne, you know, he's the filmmaker in the family. He's won awards now. So if anything's going to happen, it's going to be through him. Believe me. That's what I'm picking up. Not told, but in a roundabout way. I was told. So there's your information. If a documentary comes out and it's good and it's got a lot of friggin' live Randy stuff, probably Jack is going to be doing a Jack Osborne. I think. That's pretty much what I, I'm going to do. Thank you.
taught me that one. He taught me... So, that's it. Uh, as far as videos, that's your thing. Uh, I hope you guys like the video I put up of Pine Knob. I know one person does. Paolo! He's my bud. You've helped me a lot. I took your advice, and that other guy, Tony, Tony Berg, uh, Jason, I'm starting to remember your names, finally. Because, you, you know, you guys you know, give me points, and you give me, uh, you know, you comment, you say something. That's what I need is feedback. If I'm just talking to a camera, it gets friggin' boring. But if I know at least three or four people are listening, or five, or a thousand point zero one now, or whatever the hell that is, thanks, finally, huh? It took so long. It took me one year and three months of begging to get that so thank you but i gotta keep it up above there they're already running ads on my friggin videos and i haven't even finished setting the dang thing up to collect the money so <laughs> Peace, Neil Pert, or as my uh, ex cousin in law, he was a probably one of the worst drummers I ever heard. <laughs> but he had a big set, and I was like, "Come on, man, practice." He just is like people say, "What's his name?" Lars. His tempo was this guy had no inner metronome. He was just all over. 
Especially if, you know, most drummers are boom, psh, boom, psh, boom. As soon as they do a fill or a roll or something, then everything goes to hell. And that was him. He's like, boom, boom. I'm like, ugh. Actually, I remember going up to his house with this guitar and that Johnson amp and jamming, and I'm like, he goes, dude, Neil Peart is my favorite drummer. I'm like, who's that? He goes, Rush. I go, you mean Neil Peart? He goes, no, Neil Peart. Peart, Peart, he's gone. So, <laughs> rest in Peart, Neil. He was one of those drummers, man, like Bonham. You're done. Rush is done. They're not going to find another one of that. He, not only was he the drummer, he was the principal songwriter and, and lyricist for the thing. For the band. <laughs> and I love Rush. I was going to play something. Oh, here, I'll, I'll play it right now. That's the symbol for YYZ. Ding 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 ding. How does that? on that he's doing like crazy chords with I don't know it but I love YYZ and friggin uh, Red Barchetta I love moving pictures that reminds me of a time where everything was just ass kicking and I'm like oh that's that weird band because they had like I thought they had a ugly girl was singing and Getty Lee and then I'm like oh it's not an ugly witch it's a guy that's even more weird. But that voice is so distinct. Apparently, Kiss and Rush are like that. They love each other. Because Rush was able to hide their their drug intake from Kiss. So you're in good standing with at least Gene. And if Gene likes it, then, you know. And, of course, Ace figured out and Peter that, you know, couple of them partied a little harder, but uh, apparently they all kind of smoked pot back then, and when they were on tour, Rush was opening for Kiss, and Neil Peart, <laughs> Peart heard Peter's drum, he was like amazed at Peter's drumming, because Peter was not, a, he said, like, you're not a rock drummer, you're not a rock and roll drummer, you're like a jazz he goes, well, yeah, my teacher was, oh, what was his teacher? Peter Chris is a very famous guy. Gosh, I know the guy's name. Uh, anyways, the very famous drummer. Just look up who, who uh, it's like almost saying like Eddie Van Halen was my teacher. This guy was like amazing drummer. But he was from like the, you know, the big band era. And that's who Peter Chris learned off of. So he was like a, he had to learn how to play heavy, but he had a groove to him. Peter had a freaking groove. So anyways, Neil loved to listen to Peter because he loved the drum sound because he had the bottom heads off, and apparently that gave it a bigger sound, and he, he copied a lot of stuff Peter did, but he was like a thousand light years better than Peter. But Peter, at his peak, 75, 76, 70, 75, 76, 77, he was already, and it never came back. But, uh, so there you go. There's your story for that. And as usual on cue, mm, two minutes later. So that's it. It's the same line, same song and friggin' dance. I wish someone would dance out of here. Subscribe and comment. Do not fart. Subscribe, comment, and, uh... My fart and uh, say something and say something about this say something about this say something about the dead bird on my arm say something 
Say something. something. See? <laughs> and no one's even here. And I could get that somebody to do that. Say it again. Something. No, you're supposed to say it again. Oh, it again. All right. <laughs> there you go. See you later. Until next week. Goodbye. Have fun watching this video and all the friggin' Randy videos I put up last night. Like 12 or 14. I don't know what they were, but there you go. The guitar, the bears.